Hey folks, welcome back. 2011 GMC Yukon 5.3 liter V8. It has a P0172, P0175 fuel system rich bank one. Um, that's all it had. This um, is for the mass airflow sensor that I unplugged doing the trying to test and make sure um, that that wasn't the cause of the problem, but I wanna go through uh, what I'm pretty sure is the cause of the problem. So we'll go in and we'll, uh, anytime you're uh, checking uh, fuel trims for a rich running condition or a lean running condition, we gotta go in and check fuel trims. Uh, for this scan tool, we're gonna go read data stream. And then we're going to go fuel trim data. We're going to go long term fuel trim bank one, bank two. Um, where is the loop status? Loop status right there. And then we're going to come down here to short term fuel trim bank two. Okay, go ahead and start this up. As you can already see, before this <clears throat> has got to get into closed loop, but before it did, you can see what numbers I had on here before. There it goes, closed. Short term's trying to bring the fuel back. Negative 25. That's a lot of fuel trim going right there i mean it's it's trying to take away every bit of fuel that it can keep you know but still as far as i understand it but it is running way too rich um, one thing that you need to check on these vehicles first thing is are they a flex fuel because that's important if it is or not so we're going to add one more parameter to this. We're going to go back out of here. Well, back into here. Okay, so we've got our select. Just got to find it. No alcohol content. Why would we do that? Okay. Sixty-four percent. That means it's it thinks that the alcohol content in this fuel um, is sixty-four percent alcohol, and it's trying to compensate for running that. And so the that's way too high. And I I know the people that own this car, and they told me that they do not fill up with. We don't even have E85 in our, you know, in any of the, the two gas stations that we have in town here. Um, don't have that. At the most, we're going to be, you know, at 10%. But our fuel isn't even that much. It's usually around, you know, five, six, seven ish, <clears throat> unless you get the, you know, actual non-alcoholic uh, 92 octane or whatever. Um, but that's they've been just running just a regular. Uh, 85 or 87 octane i can't remember what it is here but um the lowest amount possible so this engine's trying to compensate and run this engine based on it thinking that there's that much uh alcohol content in here so what we need to do is go back out of here and we need to think we're going to go in actuation test fuel system Fuel composition reset. This procedure will reset the fuel alcohol content value. Resetting the fuel content um, under improper conditions may cause diagnostic trouble codes and drivability problems. Use only when detected by the service manual. But anyways, we're gonna we're gonna reset it. Ok, 
Okay, so now we're gonna go back into uh, fuel trim data. Fuel alcohol content's already selected for us. This particular uh, scan tool kind of does that. You come in and out of on the same vehicle, it keeps what you've already had um, selected, except for loop status apparently didn't show up. Uh, short term fuel bank two and one, and hit OK. Holy moly's, look at the difference in those. Rev the engine up a little bit. A little too much, but I'll also explain here another problem that this vehicle's having. Obviously that's a lot better numbers than what we were having before. Um, so that's one thing a person needs to check first is that fuel alcohol content percentage. Um, <clears throat> you know, this 3.64, that's a lot closer to what uh, I would expect, you know, maybe four or five, it might get up a little bit higher um, as you run and drive the vehicle. Um, if we ran and drove this thing around a little bit, we'd probably get these numbers, uh, and we will, get these numbers closer to um, zero. But I want to explain the other issue we're having with this vehicle. Hey, it's the other problem um, <clears throat> that this vehicle has. Um, I don't know if I mentioned before, this is a 5.3. Um, this can also pertain to, I believe, the 6.2. I believe the 4.3. Is that a is that a GM V6? In, I don't know. Um, but anyways, um, the uh, oil bath area inside the valve cover for the PCV valve and all that stuff gets plugged up with carbon. The oil can't drain out of it. This thing burns a little bit of oil um, on acceleration. You might know that they might notice it when it first starts up in the morning, but mostly on cell acceleration. Uh, sometimes it'll if you you know go around a curve, you slow down for the curve, and then as soon as you go come out of the curve and you hit, uh, you know, step down on the accelerator again and just a poof of, of uh, blue smoke comes out of it. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we've got, um, right over here, let's go, we got a after, or a up to, updated, not an aftermarket, but an updated um, valve cover. Um, that's not really what this video is about. I was, um, I just wanted to mention that we've got this, you know, updated here um, the only advice I can give for trying to find one of these is make sure it's got the right size nipple here um, that, I think that's the PCV I mean it's I'm a diesel shop so we're learning this automotive stuff with everybody else but make sure it's got the right size of this or else you know because they did change this um, I don't know in what year could have been 2008 2009 I don't know 10 at some point this looks different um, in the earlier models or it might be different in the later models. I don't know. Um, but this particular problem affects um, a lot of different uh, vehicles. So um, that's what we're doing on this. And then once we get that done, uh, we'll take this thing for a drive, get it all kind of cleared out and, and uh, check out those fuel trims after that. Oh, and um, Earlier what I did was I, I came out here and I uh, unhooked the um, mass airflow sensor. I also pulled it out. Um, it was not dirty at all, but I did just spray some mass airflow sensor cleaner on here. But by unplugging it, if those fuel trim numbers <clears throat> would say start to come back to normal or closer to normal or change or do whatever, I mean, they wanted to stay at negative 25, 26, um, just pegged out like that. There was no change in them at all. Um, if I would have unplugged this and those numbers would have started coming closer back to zero again, I would suspect that we'd have a, a mass airflow sensor that's not detecting the right amount of air um, coming in to the engine. So um, that's what we uh, did with that. So I just thought I'd mention that. So anyways, we're going to, um, I'm not going to be able to have time to film this whole repair, but I did check. There are uh, videos 
um, on how and what to do to uh, change that um, valve cover. Um, there's even a video a guy made how to uh, fix your current valve cover. We're not going to do that, um, but you can you know fix the current valve cover to where it'll work properly and not have to buy a new one but they're not that expensive so we're just gonna buy the new one so anyways we'll uh keep going you know what i thought i'd just go ahead and uh just go ahead and take a little bit of time to do this um this original valve cover obviously here um what you have going on with these with this oil consumption problem is you can see that hole very small and it's all plugged up with gunk this is to the back of the engine it does kind of set here so what happens is, is you can see right here where the oil splashed up from from one of the rockers and it's there's one exactly right here and one exactly right here so oil comes in right here and it flows down it mostly probably comes in through this one and then it flows down here and it starts collecting in here and starts coming out of this right here <clears throat> into your PCV system and that's where you're getting that oil consumption at and so this updated design does not have these slits in here. Um, what I went ahead and did was drilled that hole bigger, added a couple holes right here and one right here. I was thinking about back here, but doesn't need to have it back here because it's all gonna, if oil gets in here, it's, it's gonna flow back backwards anyway so you don't need nothing up here or whatever by the time it gets to this point because this is the end that has our nipple on there um what this is going to do is just allow any oil that does get in here to drain out of these holes possibly before it gets to this hole this is the last resort hole right here drilled it out an old five no it was 11 64 no wait a minute 3 16 sorry 3 16 holes i put in right here Two right there don't have to do two of them if you want to um, this needs to remain open because this is how your crankcase gases get out it's through here that's kind of what this particular system is for and yeah it's super easy to get this valve cover off there's four bolts eight millimeters to get it off and then to get this off um, just unplug the plug there, remove a few uh, wiring harness ends like this here, and there was another one back over here. You know, I just kind of tuck this up out of the way. Uh, those are the bolts that um, mount this guy on here, and it all just, it just comes off of here. Uh, super, super easy, and this should totally fix the uh, oil consumption problem. So let's get this back together, go take this thing for a drive, and see what our fuel trims and all that stuff look like after that. Okay, we just took this thing out and uh, drove it around. Uh, no check engine light, no trouble codes. I'm gonna go back and check out these uh, fuel trims again. And also the um, alcohol content of the fuel, let's see what it did. Okay, so we're gonna go Long-term fuel trim, bank one, loop status, bank two. Uh, yeah, Short-term, bank one, bank two, where was that one? Fuel alcohol content, that oh, there. Three point six four, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it might grow up a little bit. I really don't know what even it uh, supposed to do as far as why that went up so high to 64%. I mean, maybe they have run E85 in this thing in, at some point recent. I don't know. They said they didn't, but I really don't know what the whole point is and why that would be. But these fuel trim numbers look a lot better. Um, I like to see them a little more closer to zero, but we're less than 10, so it's not too bad. Um, you can see the short term is not trying to do a whole lot per se to change it um so anyways yeah <clears throat> and this could change and go up you know as you drive more as you fill the tank up more um we're at two-thirds full now or three-quarters about 
Um, so yeah, as for the why, I don't know why that um, is what it is um, as far as that goes, but um, we took care of the negative 25, negative 26 uh, long-term fuel trim readings just by resetting the uh, fuel composition for it sensing, you know, the alcohol, how much alcohol is in the gas. Um, because that's how it's going to change the, the the fuel delivery and the engine timing, I believe. I don't know. It's got to do all that kind of stuff um, on these flex fuels because that's what it's it's what it's designed to do. Um, so if this thing had learned about you know running off of uh, E85 or whatever, um, and then you're not running it anymore, that's I don't know. But they said they didn't run it, so I have no idea what makes that counter go up so high like that. Um, that's really high so maybe it's never been reset um, you know 133,000 miles on this uh, car right now so I I don't know I don't know so the why is I just I don't know if you're gonna look it up go for it I may look up maybe do a follow-up I don't know right now I don't have time to look at the why but we fixed it fuel trim numbers are even coming uh, eh, they're about staying about about the same but you know to drive it along but the check engine light didn't come back on so that's all i can do for now anyways thanks for watching